Hi and welcome to TRX Bench. Today here on the bench we have a FM radio. It is called Euron, which is, yeah, it is uh, in reality a TYT, which uh, is a Chinese manufacturer. And uh, it is a quad uh, band uh, FM receiver, no, tran transceiver, so that is uh, better. And uh, this radio came in with uh, no function, so it is not firing up. Let's see um, what has happened to the Chinese radio. Okay, so let's see what we have. I switch on my power supply. No, that was the wrong button. Now I've switched it on and what we see is uh, already that uh, the radio is drawing 100 uh, milliamps. Yeah, for sure. So it is uh, definitely drawing current. So something is uh, going on here in the radio. But yeah, so I definitely I'm definitely not able to uh, fire it up. So, hmm. Yeah, let's take it apart and uh, let's see what's going on here. All right. So, nothing uh, obvious to see. Still, uh, I'm a little bit wondering why uh, we really uh, have this uh, 100 uh, milliamps um, current. Uh, so, I mean, that uh, shows that uh, our supply voltage uh, should be present. But, yeah, let me uh, connect it here back. So, yeah, 107 uh, milliamps, which is uh, going through our radio. And, uh, yeah, let me, let me check here uh, our main voltage, if... Uh, our 13.5 is present but I believe it is because otherwise we wouldn't see um, the uh, milliamps 13.5 uh, you see that which uh, is fine uh, so no problem okay now we really need uh, to think about how to go ahead simply because yeah we need a plan how to approach uh, our problem and um, well since uh, we have seen no um, reaction when we press our on off button here we think we need to think about uh, how it works all together and normally it is so that our front panel so our user panel needs to be supplied uh, with an operating voltage even if our radio is uh, simply switch off because there must be yeah a kind of uh, standby uh, voltage that the radio can start up so that is one point and additional to that not uh, only that uh, we need here a voltage at uh, our user panel we need a voltage which yeah again is a kind uh, of standby which is independent from if the radio is switched in or off so therefore that might be our first step to look after how it hangs together and that means let's analyze a little bit our circuitry to understand how it works and then we um, should be able to go down to the circuit and uh, take take uh, some measurements all right and this sch schematic here is showing us the basic uh, voltage uh, distribution yeah so that is called power so you can read it uh, down there so this schematic is uh, called power right 
and um, well what we see up here is that uh, we get the voltage uh, supplied which is our main voltage so called 13.8 volt so it's going in is uh, so this this is here our polarity protection so if you put it wrong way around so this will lead uh, to a controlled short and should then blow the fuse in line and here yeah so that is a PTC protection so if there is high current this will go up in uh, resistance and well let me go ahead so then obviously we have here only one voltage regulator with which is uh, this one here so the U41 and the U41 should deliver 5C and that is directly hanging here at our supply voltage Additional to that, we see that uh, we have a voltage SB and FB. Okay. All the other voltages we uh, have here over um, this voltage regulator, this or this, can only be present if let me see if it is true what I'm thinking um, yes looks like alright what we see here is power start control called PK right and this PK needs to get needs to get up here to the Q32. So we need a positive voltage. So that is uh, supporting our assumption that we need at our uh, user panel uh, a voltage, a standby voltage, otherwise with this PK information which is finally nothing else than most likely, I don't know, 5 volt or whatever which is then switching this digital uh, transistor here, right? So we need a positive voltage and then we switch the Q32 which will subsequently pull here our base of our Q30 to base. And that means if Q40 is uh, pulled to base uh, to, to ground, sorry, if uh, the base is pulled to ground over the Q32 uh, which is engaged by a positive voltage called PK, right? Then that means that all here our voltage regulators will fire up and will um, finally fire up the entire radio. So that is as it works. So that means what we need to find is our 5C or with other words our U41 and we need to find where or what kind of voltage will go up to our front panel. It could be that it is a FB because that is a voltage in front of our Q40 so that is um, present even on standby. So that voltage is in question so let's see where that is going. 
um, because we should see, as we discussed it, a voltage at our front panel connector, right? So that here, of course, is our front uh, panel connector and uh, that is um, really here connecting yeah, our user panel with the main unit and uh, that is our connector where we need to have a voltage. Otherwise our radio is not able to deliver finally our PK voltage which we need to engage our entire power supply, right? So let's uh, check if or where the voltage should be present at this connector. Okay, and we have here a schematic that is called, yeah, you can read it uh, down there, it is called E-Band 1.0 whatever that means um, and uh, we have here in the center of our schematic our microprocessor and we have down there so let me enlarge it a little bit so down there we have a J I is it J I or is it J one hundred fourteen con six whatever so that uh, connector is most likely here our uh, front panel connection so with uh, six pins so that is what we have here on the main board and what we see, ah and that is interesting have a look so there we find our FB and then we find here a power which is going to P power is going to P17 and P stands most likely for processor let me see what do we have here um, P17 Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe I can't find it right away. P17. Um, <laughs> P11. Ah, here. Here it is. And yeah, P17. And that means initialize maybe so not so many information we have but could be transceiver initialize whatever so that makes sense because uh, we have seen uh, that is now that must be something different I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, important for the moment in time is our FB. And that means FB should be present at our connector. And uh, if we going back here to... Where is it? Here. So we uh, see that FB, which is here, should be our 13 point whatever 8 volt so that is what uh, we should test first if uh, we can read our FB and of course then we should uh, look after here our 5C and uh, again I'm still wondering where our 100 milliamps are coming from is that maybe a short all right, so let's go step by step. So I do not really need to uh, connect here our uh, user panel since the voltage uh, should be uh, present anytime, right? So that is not 
uh, dependent here on our user panel. And when I'm connecting back here my supply voltage, once again we see our 100 milliamps which are running here through. And let me see if we can place it here somehow that uh, we can test here um, all the pins. Not sure if we all can see it. Maybe that way. So now I can check here all contacts and one contact should at least have uh, it was already 200 C millivolt. So that is odd. So that is not what uh, we want to see. So we would like to see 13, in our case 13.5 volt. And I can touch all the pins. So 5 on 5 we have 203 millivolt and on the last one nothing. So once again let's uh, check here our supply voltage which is present and uh, that voltage should be uh, also um, as we have seen it here on uh, our connector which is not present. So the question is why? In this case it is important to find yeah, at least um, I mean we, we know that uh, obviously this FB is not at our connector and uh, we have a PTC so that is important to find and then after the PTC we have here our uh, U41 which uh, is our 5C voltage supply. So let's see if we find the R40 and the U41 to simply check um, if the voltage is uh, really present here because we are testing behind the PTC. So minimum here at our R40 and uh, what is it here? Our um, E33, which is an electrolytic capacitor, we should see our 13.5 volt. Okay, and that here is our board plan for sure. And yeah, I have looked around already here a little bit, and yeah, you see here are our wires, our power wires and here we have our protection diode and so forth and so forth. And when I go down here to our connector and let me enlarge it here a little bit, we find here our J114 which is our, which is our friend front panel, panel connector and you see here our R40 and our U41. So let's see if at uh, R40 we can see our 13.5 volt, right? Okay, and uh, in reality it is uh, down there. So let me zoom in that uh, you can see it better. So here we have our voltage regulator for 5C and uh, down there. So that is our resistor and we should be able to read 13.1 uh, volt, 13.5 uh, sorry, at uh, this resistor. So let's check that first. All right, so let's see that uh, we really can get here both on uh, the picture and I go down here now to our R40 and let's see what we have down there. Aha! Have a look! So our 13.5 volt are really present 
at uh, one end of our resistor and it should be as well on the other um, side of the resistor let's see what wow so on the other side we have 2.7 volt and we should see more or less the same voltage as we have here yeah a 5 volt regulator finally and here our uh, second side of our resistor is uh, simply the input of our voltage regulator and we should see maybe a little less than 13.5 uh, maybe I don't know maybe 13 or maybe 12 so doesn't matter but uh, not only 2 volt so hmm, let me look into uh, the diagram for this part okay so that is the data sheet here of our HT7550 and if we go down here our HT7550 is uh, a 5 volt regulator so we can see it down there and it is uh, 100 uh, milliamp uh, low power LDO also that uh, means that is a low power device and yeah so that is a TO92 housing and uh, let's see if we get here any information about what the pinout is ah, it is already here so left is ground our middle pin is input and uh, the right pin is output so I mean we only see 2.5 volt whatever we see in input and uh, let's see what the output uh, is so that is the right pin so let us see what we can uh, find there okay once uh, again uh, I do not see nothing here okay so once again so that is our input resistor that is the input of our regulator 2.7 volt and that means according to our data sheet this here is the output and the output is 483 so here we have definitely already a problem and that already could be the reason for our 100 milliamps what we are currently seeing here while uh, nothing is really switched on and um, we know that this little device only will deliver 100 milliamps and uh, yeah it looks like that uh, our output is uh, totally collapsed so that means something is already wrong down there so that does not really explain why we do not see our 13.8 volt at our connector down here front panel connector um, according to our schematic it should be present even if uh, we have a problem here with uh, this regulator and we only test it here the voltage at our R40 simply because we wanted to know if the voltage is uh, present because we have seen that there is a, a PTC in line which I uh, cannot find on our board so maybe it is underneath so therefore what we need to do as next step um, I really have to take out uh, the PCB out of the housing to uh, look underneath and uh, see if maybe we have some burning marks uh, underneath or what's going on here is the PTC underneath and uh, yeah so on and so on right so as next uh, step uh, we really take out uh, this regulator and uh, let's see if uh, this uh, regulator if it is really broken uh, what I believe if uh, that is causing our 100 milliampere so let's see when I take it out and uh, still we uh, need to find where the trace is to our connector 
from FB, right? So that is uh, important. But first, let's take it out and see what's going on there. Right, so our regulator is uh, out. And uh, now let's see when we uh, connect it here back to the power supply, what will happen then. And you see, so no current flow whatsoever and uh, that means that uh, really the little regulator uh, is uh, dead so now when we uh, test once again here at the input of our resistor 13.5 output 13.5 input uh, into the regulator 13.5 and uh, that is uh, definitely uh, what we expect Right, so we have here uh, a dead regulator, so that is for sure. So I've put here a wire to where normally the output of uh, our little regulator is. Um, and uh, well, <laughs> uh, I wonder if uh, my last uh, statement uh, was uh, completely right simply because uh, yeah so I have here connected uh, one end of my meter and now I go here down to ground with uh, the other side of the probe and uh, when you read now our value so it is 5 ohm and uh, yeah you know it uh, is not only um, the uh, regulator if um, it is really one part I mean of the fold the regulator so the regulator really could be fine after seeing that we uh, have here a short on our plus bus so that is uh, our um, 5k uh, bus and uh, there we definitely have a short I mean 5 volt so hmm, that uh, is not good and on this line we have the uh, microprocessor we have the EEPROM and um, uh, let's see uh, what uh, we can find in the schematic right so what uh, have we done so far so first of all uh, we found that uh, we had 100 milliamps uh, flowing current here in uh, our circuit and uh, yeah so therefore we took out here our U41 which uh, is our 5k regulator so hmm, not sure if you uh, can read it so let's uh, try to enlarge it here a little bit more but uh, now I hope yeah you can read it so we have uh, taken this out and uh, then we have seen um, that the 100 milliamps are gone and uh, thus I concluded that uh, that might be our regulator itself but uh, after I have done here a test on uh, the 5k uh, uh, bus line um, we saw or uh, we see a 5 ohm resistor and that is uh, almost a uh, short to ground that should not be there considering that uh, we have on that line only uh, our microprocessor and uh, EEPROM and uh, whatnot. Yeah, maybe we can uh, see it better here on uh, this part of our schematic. So uh, you see here our 5K is uh, feed it uh, in, and uh, what we see is uh, we have uh, 5K up here. So let's do it a bit uh, bigger and uh, you see that is here our 
supply for our processor and uh, then we have here 5k so this is obviously the EEPROM this is here the reset IC where we have uh, 5k and additional uh, to that I have found here 5k uh, which is uh, AVCC um, which is uh, as well a kind of uh, supply for our so you see here the AVCC line called here at the processor VCC so that uh, is uh, also uh, a supply whatever what we find here as well is a Zener diode and uh, that Zener diode is uh, yeah, connected to ground and that is an over voltage uh, protection so when uh, the voltage is getting higher than uh, 5.6 volt then this Zener diode will break through and uh, will protect our ICs so hmm if we are lucky this could be an answer but there is another funny thing I wanted to show you so you may remember when we uh, talked here about our uh, connector our CON6 we found here FB and uh, on our power supply section we found FB to be here in front uh, of our power uh, transistor right and uh, FB means it is directly coming here from our supply line and FB is going here into you know this distribution and we found uh, FB um, going out here up there can you see it one second and we found FB going out here to another part of uh, our schematic and I just wanted to follow the FB line and uh, thought uh, yeah it uh, must be uh, here because uh, here uh, we have uh, our connector over there so that is our connector and uh, there we have uh, our FB you uh, remember right so here's our FB and I thought yeah okay so here uh, where we have uh, all the connections coming from uh, different sections uh, of our uh, schematic I thought well okay FB must be here somewhere simply because uh, we have FB here hmm and that is why we concluded okay we should have at uh, our connector finally our 13 point something volt which we didn't see and then I um, recognize when I go up here that uh, some, uh, suddenly FB is called you can see it here SBE right is it readable or do I need to, to enlarge it more once again if I go up here suddenly this line is called SBE hmm SBE and I thought okay let's follow that um, and um, yeah I found SBE here on this uh, distributor and uh, SBE is going here in and not out so you see this is coming out this is coming out and this is going in and I thought okay so let's see where SB is going to so therefore you know back here to our yeah, regulator part of uh, our circuit and uh, there we have SBE which is going out to the part we have seen just before and I thought okay where comes it from and uh, yeah then I saw alright SBE is over there 
and I thought, hmm, that is now really weird. Because you see, we have here FB, which is in front of our Q30, and we have SBE behind our Q30. And uh, we already know that uh, we need to get this digital transistor switched by a positive voltage simply uh, to get the base of uh, Q30 to ground in order to switch it through. And under these circumstances, SPE is only present if you know the radio is going to switch on. I mean, we see here our PK and uh, we already have seen that uh, the PK line is a power start line uh, from the controller. So that is coming from uh, our uh, microprocessor, right? And uh, if the microprocessor is giving a positive voltage to our digital transistor, then, you know, our Q30 will uh, switch uh, through and SPE is present. So, and there uh, it is really weird. Because simply when we go back here to uh, our known part and uh, seeing here our SPE line, which we found to be behind the Q30, that means that only uh, the 13 point something volt is present if the Q30 is switched through, right? And then suddenly we find it back as FB, and FB we have seen is in front of the Q30, which means is it should be present right when you connect your radio to the power supply. So that is weird and uh, I don't know for the moment in time what uh, is right and what is wrong. But uh, that uh, doesn't matter right now because now we really have uh, to focus on our uh, F uh, 5K bus, so our uh, supply line for all the important ICs and uh, especially here for our uh, CPU because uh, yeah, uh, 5K is uh, supplying our CPU right uh, from the moment we uh, connect our radio with a power supply or battery in the car or whatever. So right in the moment when the radio is getting voltage you will have uh, 5K up and uh, supplying our processor. And that is uh, really necessary simply because this uh, must be in standby because when you are pressing your uh, on button here, right? So when we are pressing here our power button, then you know our uh, CPU needs to wake up and uh, switch uh, our digital uh, transistor in order to get our Q30 uh, switched through to really get and fire up all voltages which are needed to operate the radio in general. So therefore we have to concentrate uh, on that and we need to understand why our, um, you know, 5K bus is shorted. And I hope that uh, for an unknown reason this uh, D110 might be shorted because uh, it has maybe um, protected uh, the radio for uh, too high voltage, whatever. So let's go and check what's going on here. The signal diode we are looking for is the guy down there. And uh, the only way uh, to find out what's uh, going on is uh, to take it out and uh, see if 
that component is uh, causing uh, so f is a short and uh, if not then all becomes uh, a bit more critical because then it might be that uh, one of our most important ICs might cause so short and uh, that would be really an issue then but okay first let's take it out right so there you can see our little diode and uh, yeah let's see what has happened here oops that uh, is a little bit tricky here to but mm, no fun let me try to do it that way yeah so that is a diode uh, test mode and uh, diode uh, test mode is uh, giving us a short for sure one direction turn it around turn it around and to do uh, the other direction and it is definitely giving us a short so this little diode is dead so that uh, is uh, telling us that uh, yeah the diode the Zena diode uh, definitely tried to protect the radio for high voltages um, right so that is out and now let's uh, see um, if the short is gone in uh, our circuit right we are using again uh, our little wire which uh, we have connected here to um, yeah our circuit so that is wow it's still in in uh, diode mode and that is telling us there is a short but let me go back to um, our ohm mode and right so let's uh, see what we have so that is uh, 16 ohm I mean it has improved because uh, the shorted diode is uh, out but still um, you know 15 uh, 16 ohm is still uh, short to ground so that is not normal considering that uh, we only have now uh, the ICs on the bus so therefore that is no good sign so it looks like that the diode tried to protect the radio but uh, shorted out and when it uh, was shorted out uh, all the high voltage was able to get through to you know the ICs and maybe something has happened to the ICs so hmm right I've set here my second uh, power supply to 500 uh, to 5 volt and uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm uh, connecting here my uh, 5 volt to our circuit and uh, I'm using here our very well known alcohol method to check if uh, uh, a component is uh, getting uh, hot and uh, let me first uh, focus here on the CPU which uh, is of course that guy and uh, on the EEPROM which is down here so let me put uh, alcohol here on both uh, components and I hope you guys are able to see it I don't know which is a good um, angle here uh, to visualize it right I hope you can see it now I switch on 
the power supply and uh, let's see what's happened. Oh wow! Can you see that? So that, yeah, and uh, it's uh, pulling 340 milli and uh, you see obviously oh yes yeah 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 it's getting hot it's getting hot the processor is getting hot so our EEPROM is uh, fine no problem but uh, definitely let me put some new here on our processor let me connect it once again and yeah you directly see that uh, the alcohol is going away and uh, I can feel it trust me so it is very very hot so yeah <laughs> yeah so that is what uh, I really expected so the CPU is dead and so I believe I'm I'm not sure but uh, what I know from uh, other radios is that uh, people are trying to uh, connect here you know an extension uh, a cable uh, for using it uh, in the car for instance to separate the radio and uh, the user panel and they are uh, they do not use the original one and uh, yeah, if you use a LAN, uh, uh, a local area network um, kind, one, whatever, it is wired up in a different way. And uh, you know, you uh, have crossings in those uh, wires, cables, which you can buy on the market. And then um, it, um, yeah, it happened to be that uh, maybe our 13 uh, volt was uh, by the crossings you has, have in uh, those cables um, put to our 5k bus and uh, our little diode has really tried hard to protect our ICs uh, for getting toasted but uh, we have seen that um, our diode is uh, dead shorted as well so was not able to protect at least uh, our processor and uh, well um, we, we have seen it I, I, I think I do not need uh, to prove it uh, once again but uh, yeah let's let's do so let's go closer and let's connect it here and uh, yeah you directly see it you directly see it the processor is uh, boiling off here our alcohol and uh, yeah that is a clear sign for having yeah a toasted CPU and that means for this radio we are at the end for sure because uh, you can buy this radios for 180 um, dollar or um, euro new including uh, shipping and um, additional to that there is no real supply uh, chain for parts I mean normal parks parts uh, we uh, could use from other sources but uh, especially the CPU the uh, EEPROM so we need uh, the daters and I believe in this mo microprocessor will be a little portion with uh, software as well so that means we definitely would need an original part and uh, there is no uh, part supply as far as I know so that means it's over <laughs> it's definitely uh, over very sad but this radio is toasted yeah if uh, TYT is uh, watching so please uh, 
supply some parts and uh, we will fix the radio and uh, if uh, anyone of uh, you guys uh, know where we could get an original CPU for this radio let me know um, otherwise you know even uh, if you get another uh, microprocessor so normally a microprocessor will cost approximately 40-50 bucks and uh, yeah a radio for 180 uh, dollar delivered yeah does it uh, make any sense to invest 50 bucks uh, into a processor and uh, yeah we need another diode and we do not know if uh, another part has been hurt as well so okay right anyways thanks for watching hope you have learned something and uh, catch you next time bye